Welcome to Living Life. May God bless you with His presence. I was born and raised in a Buddhist family. Then I met Jesus Christ and became a believer when I was in third grade. Since I was the first Christian in my family, I often envied you know, my church friends who were born in Christian families. It seems like you know, those friends had many spiritual benefits. Whatever they did, prayer, worship, singing, it all seemed much more natural than me. And whenever I saw my friends enter church with you know, both of you know, parents, I felt a bit jealous of the people who got, in, uh, got to grow up in a Christian family. In today's passage, the Apostle Paul continues his discussions about the role of the law and in contrast it with the freedom that comes through faith in Christ. Do you know that you, know, uh, you are no longer a slave to sin, but rather a child of God? And now let's explore today's passage. Galatians 4, 1 to 11. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is underaged, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So also, when we were underage, we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child, and since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were slaves to those who by nature are not gods. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that somehow I have wasted my efforts on you. The Apostle Paul begins by using the analogy of the inner child who is an heir. Even though the child is in the future owner of the estate, he or she is no longer different from a slave while still a minor. Since the child is under the guardian and the trustees until the time set by the father, this is a picture of the humanity's conditions before Christ. People were under the elementary principles of the world, in other words, the law, and a world like a ch children who had not yet experienced the full privilege of being heirs. Before Christ, even though we were meant to inherit God's promises, that we were still under the restrictions of the law, like a children under the many rules. Paul explains that when the time was right, and God sent his son, born of the woman and born under the law, to redeem those under the law. Through Jesus' life and death and resurrection, we are no longer enslaved by the law, but instead are redeemed and received the full right of the being children of God. Because we are His children, God sent the Spirit of the His Son into our hearts and the Spirit calls out, Abba, Father. This expression of intimacy and it shows a close personal relationship with God. As a result, we are no longer slaves, but their uh, heirs you know, through God. We have been adopted into God's family and have the privilege of calling God Father through the Holy Spirit. We can experience a new intimate relationship with our Heavenly Father and bring us intimacy and assurance in our lives.
Paul then warns the Galatians in the not to return to their old ways of a slavery to false god and pagan practices. Before knowing God, they were enslaved to those weak and miserable forces. Now that they know God, and or rather are known by God, and Paul is perplexed as to why they would want to you know, go back to such a enslavement and particularly you know by the adopting the requirements of the Jewish law again. Returning to the law or any form of a legalism after receiving the freedom through the you know, crisis is like a returning to slavery. That would be so foolish. And you know, Paul specifically criticized the Galatians uh, for the observing the special days, month, and the season, and the years according to the Jewish uh, Jewish religious in the calendar. And uh, he fears that his work among them might be in vain if they are falling back into legalism and uh, believing that observing the these practices practices is a necessary for their salvation. While reading the today's passage, I could feel a positive pause of frustration because of Galatians were tempted to return to their old worldly habits after experiencing the love of God. They were finding their religious confidence in legalism. Jesus' coming marked the end of being under the law's authority. Through his sacrifice, we are redeemed and adopted into God's family, no longer slaves to the law, but free and rightful heirs. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts allow us you know, to call our Father as a proof of our adoption into God's family. After having a, such an intimate relationship, we cannot go back to slavery. Paul's analogy you know, clearly tells us that we are no longer enslaved to the law, but are the children of God who will inherit the promise of God. Doesn't this affect Fill us with the joy. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you that Father, you know, you did not save us by the law, but Father, you know, through the Jesus Christ. Not only Father, you give us eternal life, but Father, you changing us from the slave of the sin to the children of God. And, you know, Father, what a wonderful story. What a wonderful transformation that you gave us, Lord. Yes, Lord, we cannot go back to what it used to be like. You know, Father, you set us free from the you know, law. You set us free from the regulation. You know, by the faith, you know, we received, you know, your inheritance. And I thank you that, Father, you make us to be children of God, so we can call you as Abba Father. Thank you. Thank you for your love, and I thank you for your salvation. In Jesus' name, we prayed together. Amen.